welcome. Now, assuming that you had a series of written articles, you can turn that series of written articles into a video or a video course. One of the first things you're going to do is you're going to start with a chatbot or a series of chatbots. And you want to take those articles and you want to turn them into video scripts. We can do that inside of ChatGPT. Now, we're going to upload the documents to ChatGPT, even though that's part of ChatGPT+. If you don't have ChatGPT+, what you can do is cut and paste the text directly into ChatGPT. And depending on what video creator you're going to be using, you want to tell the chatbot exactly what you want in terms of a script for the videos you're going to be creating. We're going to feed these into ChatGPT and ask for four video scripts. And we're going to click enter. And we're going to ask ChatGPT to give us the scripts. Now, as you can see, we did have to stop this chatbot. And we did have to tell it that we only want the content and that the content will be placed direct into an AI reader. And so the chatbot did have to redo the content. Once the chatbot has completed, we have now completed the first step of this process. We should now have four different scripts for four different articles. We are now ready to move on to the next step. Well, we can undertake the same process inside of another chatbot called Claude AI. What we're going to do instead of starting the process all over is we are going to cut and paste the four scripts into Claude and we're going to ask Claude to rewrite these scripts and to expand on them. Now, Claude does allow for a maximum of five documents or images to be uploaded. So what we could do is we could separate the documents and we could place them into separate documents. So we're now going to grab the four new scripts and we're going to upload them to Claude. So we're going to give Claude a specific task. We're going to ask Claude to rewrite each video script and to make it more actionable. We're then going to click enter and we're going to allow Claude to do its work. So now Claude has given us a different representation. We're going to copy this information. We're going to place it in our Word document and we're going to save it to our hard drive. And for now, instead of breaking this into four documents, we're going to leave this as one document and we're just going to call this actionable and we're going to save it for another process. Now, we can also undertake the process inside of Microsoft Bing and we can do that at copilot.microsoft.com and basically, we can enter information into the chatbot and we can request that Copilot give us information in a different form for the video scripts. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Copilot for a different rendition of the same information in a video script. So we're going to give Bing a specific task. We're then going to cut and paste the information in. We're then going to click enter. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is that Bing gives you a character limit. We're going to break the process into two and we're going to end at the second script. And Copilot will then undertake the process. We're going to do the same thing now with parts three and four. And we're going to allow ChatGPT to rewrite our scripts. So we now have a different rendition of the same information from Microsoft Bing or Microsoft Copilot. And we're going to save this information into another document. And we will use it for another process. Now, another chatbot closer related to the Amazon family of platforms is called Perplexity. And we can undertake the process in Perplexity by cutting and pasting the information into the chatbox and then asking for the information back in a specific kind of format. And we're going to give our instructions. We're then going to paste in our information. We are then going to click Enter. Now, Perplexity did return an answer and it was not necessarily the scripts. It could be that the format of the query or prompt was not correct for Perplexity. We followed up with a question and then Perplexity then rewrote the scripts as we need them. And so now basically we have the same scripts in another format. We can then copy the scripts and we can place them inside of our Word document to save them for another process. And finally, for another perspective on the same information that we are generating from our original source documents, we can use Google Bard, which is now called Gemini. And so as we have done in previous processes, we're going to cut and paste the information into the dialog box. 
Currently, Gemini does not give us the ability to upload documents, so we are going to need to cut and paste the information in and to give Gemini a prompt asking it to rewrite the content for a specific purpose. So we're going to give Gemini the task. We are then going to enter the content and we are then going to click enter and we're going to allow Gemini to work on the content. And so we did have to go back and we did have to give Gemini a second set of instructions, but on the second set of instructions, our task was undertaken. And before leaving the task, we can ask Gemini to create images for each script. And that's what we're going to do before we end this video. We're going to write in a prompt and ask Gemini to create one or two images for each video script. And we're then going to click enter. So Gemini has given us its rendition of an image for each script, even though it did not do two of each one. And so you may have to iterate with the chat bot in order to do that. However, we do have images in order to use. Now, what we want to do with each of the scripts is we want to choose the script that we want to use, and we want to place it inside of a reliable voice engine. Now, for the sake of this video, we're not going to work with all four scripts. We're going to take one script we're going to use it as a representation of all four scripts. So in this case, we're going to come to 11 labs. And what we want to do is we want to use a reliable voice in order to read the script that we have chosen. So we're going to cut and paste in our script and our script is now entered. We're now going to choose our voice and we're going to choose the voice that has proven to be the most reliable that will then give us access to some specific settings. We're going to de-emphasize the exaggeration for this speaker. And we are then going to click Generate Speech. We'll take note of how many characters we are using for this particular element. Now, for the sake of this video, we're not going to set the voice to play for its entire duration. We will listen to several seconds of the voice to make sure it is reading properly. We will then stop the video and we'll pick it up from the next part of the process. The power of words for success in business. In the realm of business, the power of words transcends mere communication. Words have the unique ability to inspire, motivate, and drive people towards achieving remarkable feats. They shape perceptions, influence decisions, and can be the difference between success and failure. This segment delves into the significance of effective communication and the strategic use of words for success in business. So we're going to stop the video here and we're going to pick it up from the next part of the process where we will look then at using a cloned voice for this part of the process. Now the next few steps in 11 Labs will require a paid account in order to undertake. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the voice area and we're going to choose a cloned voice. Now the cloned voice we're going to choose is the professional voice The 11 Labs works partially in order to construct. We're not going to use the instantly cloned voice. We're going to use the professionally cloned voice by 11 Labs. We're then going to turn on that voice for this area. And what you'll notice then is that if we click inside of the model area, we can use one of several models for this element. Now, 11 Labs does make a choice by default. We're going to go with the default model. What we're going to do is we're going to state that we want the model to be stable over time. And so we're going to increase the stability. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now regenerate the audio, but we're going to regenerate the audio using the cloned voice that was constructed by 11 Labs. To do that, we'll now click Generate Speech. The power of words for success in business. In the realm of business, the power of words transcends mere communication. Words have the unique ability to inspire, motivate, and drive people towards achieving remarkable feats. They shape perceptions, influence decisions, and can be the difference between success and failure. This segment delves into the significance of effective communication and the strategic use of words for success in business, highlighting their impact on leadership, marketing, and overcoming obstacles through the lens of the theory of constraints. Success in online marketing heavily relies. So we're going to stop the narration 
Now, as you can see, the voice began to break down over time. And so the longer that the narrator read, the voice began to break down as it reached the second paragraph. Now, there is a workaround inside of Eleven Labs. It does take more work, and we're going to demonstrate that in the next video. Again, it is part of the paid plan in order to use this portion, but in order to achieve the best results with Eleven Labs and the clone voice, it may be necessary to use this engine. Now, inside the creator plan in Eleven Labs, you have access to what are called chapters. And basically, what you can do is you can break your content up into specific chapters. So, for example, you can set it so that a specific chapter has a certain part of your document. You can then have it so that another part of the document is read in another chapter. And then another part of the document is read in another part of the chapter. And basically, what you're doing is you're giving the AI a shorter period of time and text in order for it to calibrate and to remain stable. Typically, the chapters function is used to do long bodies of text as well as audiobooks with Eleven Labs. But you can use it with your professional voice. If you can't get the voice to stabilize over longer periods of text, you can break your document up into chapters in order for it to be read and narrated.